Finland is the fastest rally of them all. The 1,000 lakes is more of a sprint than a marathon, like a Grand Prix on gravel. The challenge for drivers is handling the undulating bumps or yumps that rise out of the road. They litter every stage of the rally, so it's no surprise that only a handful of foreigners have ever come first. You don't have to be finished to win here, but it helps. Hello there and welcome back to some more WRC. Today we'll continue on with our Let's Play. This is episode 23. In today's episode, we are taking a look at Rally Finland on the professional difficulty. I don't know why I keep iterating on professional difficulty. You Three, figured by this point two, you got the message one, considering, go. you know, the rallies that were on normal difficulty it kind of obviously two. have the Subaru in the uh, right from there and the ones that are on professional have the uh, the attack sent. But uh, never mind, I'll, I'll keep saying it because I'm apparently used to it and I'm more uh, right say things that irritate people. Although I don't like saying things that irritate me, like the fact that I constantly keep saying uh, welcome back once again. I don't know why once again is coming to this. It was a habit I developed during the race city and for whatever reason I just can't shake it, so that's a bit unfortunate. Speaking of not being able to shake stuff, um, one topic that I did want to bring up at some point is uh, this game's soundtrack. I did bring it up briefly in a previous episode about how you should go ahead and go listen to it because it's actually pretty good. But uh, I've learned a little bit more about it since then and uh, it turns out much like uh, WRC3, maybe WRC2 although I haven't checked into it. Uh, not too sure on the other ones either but I know for a fact WRC3 had it as well. Uh, much like WRC3, this game's actual main menu music track is it actually a licensed song, uh, as is the one they use for the intro cutscene? It's actually a song by a group known as Faithless, which I think used to be a British. Well, they're not British, but they were pretty big over here. Uh, I think they're the guys that did the uh, "Can't Get No Sleep" song. Uh, which was immensely popular in like clubs and stuff here in the early 2000s. Like 90s, I don't remember actually, come to think of it. I remember hearing that song in the early 2000s, it could have come out before then. But uh, yeah, no, it's actually sung by then, the song is called Speed. Uh, but of course, there's actual proper license tracks in the replays and stuff. I may have mentioned a song called... Uh, much against everyone's advice, which is by Soul Wax, but there's also a feeder song, uh, A Hole in the Head, which I'm not a huge fan of it, I'll be honest, but it is a feeder song, which is cool. Uh, there's also a song by New Order, which is fantastic. The song is called Point Blank. Uh, I really like that song. That's more of a sort of chill core song, which isn't my sort of thing usually, but, uh, well, it's not something I listen to very often, because usually I'm too busy listening to heavy metal about slitting throats and shit, but, uh, yeah, you know. Occasionally I like a little bit of a chill-out song, and that one is more of a chill song. Uh, there's also a song by Garbage, which also isn't very good, because Garbage is very hit and miss when it comes to me. Some of their songs I absolutely love, Only Happy When It Rains, I really like, Heaven Is Wide's alright, but, uh, yeah, for the most part I'm not a huge fan of, uh, I forgot her name now, something Manson, Shirley Manson, I'm not a huge I'm fan of her uh, music usually. Wow, we only just lost out to Gronholm there. Although in fairness, if anyone's going to win uh, the Rally, F there's the feed or something. If anyone's going to win the uh, the Rally Finland who isn't finished, it of course should be a McRae, let's be honest. But yeah, no, the song you're hearing right now is by Faithless, it is called Speed, which is interesting. Anyways, uh, Gronholm, McRae, Mackinnon, Roven, Pera, Burns, and Carlos signs. Stage number two, hopefully we can win this stage and get ourselves a little bit of a lead going. Ah, right, okay. So now I've got a bit of a clarification on the old Faithless. I was right, uh, they are a British group apparently from the mid-90s. The reason the, the No Sleep song is actually called Insomnia which, uh, if you hear that song, you'll know exactly what it is. 
Apparently it was first released in 96 and then re-released in 2005, so I heard it either when it was re-released or the original. Uh, they actually had a few other breakout hits. Apparently they also did a song with uh, Dido as well back in the day, which is good. I do like Dido. Uh, that is not where that corner goes, mate. But, uh, yeah, no, Dido did some good stuff. Dido probably most well-known internationally for being part of uh, the Eminem song Stan, which is one of his finer efforts. I, I will say Eminem's a weird one for me. I, I liked his earlier stuff. I think he's immensely talented. I think the amount of credit he's given for white rappers and so on is insane. But uh, I'm not a huge fan of his newer stuff. I haven't listened to it all that much, but uh, there's only so much I can sort of, you know, it gets thrown down everyone's throat so much, the uh, the whole Orange Man bad thing, that I can't really listen to it in my media. I don't really care. Yes, I know Corey Taylor doesn't like him, but it doesn't really come into the music. Or at least it hasn't. I mean, his solo effort hasn't come out yet. Speaking of which, listen to the two songs from uh, that as well. I don't know if anyone here cares about music, but I'll speak about it. Um, yeah, uh, interesting songs. I believe one's called Baby Blue Eyes, which is very um, acoustic-y, poppy sort of. I'll listen to it a few times and eventually it'll get my ear. Uh, it's sort of a little bit like some of the stuff on the newer Stone uh, Sour album. Uh, that it, it does take a time, a little while to get my ear, but eventually uh, it's all right. And then of course CMFT, which is a very strange metal rap hybrid thing. Um, I like the music video. It's got his wife in it, who's incredibly crazy. But um, yeah, it, it's an interesting song. I, I probably shouldn't like it, but I sort of do. Uh, it's got a guy called a Tech Nine in it, who I know nothing about, other than the fact he's named after the submachine gun from GTA. So, that's something. But yeah, no, I, I, it's pretty good. But uh, the soundtrack to this game, definitely give that a listen. Apparently there's no Spotify playlist for it anymore. NFS soundtrack has an incomplete listing for it, but I think there's playlists on YouTube that actually get it uh, pretty right. That's not quite the lead I was hoping to get on this stage. I was sort of hoping to uh, bury Mackinnon a little bit, but I don't think Mackinnon... I think it was Gronholm was the quickest on the last stage. Could be wrong on that. We shall see, though. Um, okay, so he's a second. Yeah, it was Gronholm. Okay, so if Gronholm is four seconds behind, then Mackinnon, Rogan, Perra, Burns, and Signs. Stage number three. Let's continue that lead. Stage three. Let's see how this goes. Three, two, so I needed to one, clarify something as, as well in this. It's a little the weird thing with uh, the URC right as the game. I'm not quite sure how it is in the second game, because uh, I don't really remember it all that well. But uh, we'll, we'll soon find out. Um, one interesting thing with this game is the fact that Gronholm isn't actually as much as a contender as you think it'd be. It's the same thing with sort of Persia not being anywhere near the manufacturer's title fight, even though they pretty much own that title around this period of rallying. Also the fact Gronholm isn't uh, further up the rankings. I mean Gronholm was World Rally Champion in 2000. Even if they were developing this game not knowing the results of the championship in 2001, uh, they probably, you know, you'd, you'd figured they'd made Gronholm a little bit more of a powerful um, driver. But he's not actually that much of a threat. One or two rallies he'll uh, pop his name in, but for the most part he sort of stays pretty unregarded. And again, you know, he's the champion in 2000. He was also the champion in 2002, which is why I mentioned in WRC2. It would be an interesting one to see his pace in that. But, uh, yeah, he's a bit of a weird one. But then again, I mean, Richard Burns in this game also is a pretty... Uh, nonchalant character. Don't get me wrong, Tommy McInerney and Carl Sainz are insane rally drivers and both of them are incredibly successful, but it's a little bit strange. They uh, they don't, you know, Gronholm isn't at least beating Sainz, because, again, Sainz is amazing, don't get me wrong, but Sainz, he wasn't quite winning the title back then, you know, he's still very, very competitive, still an excellent point scorer. 
but, you know, I don't think he won... I believe his titles were... I, actually, I, I won't speak on his titles. I'm fairly certain that one was in the 80s and one was in the 90s, though. And of course, Mackinnon owned rallying from about 95 to 99. And then it sort of fell down a little bit after that. With, of course, the... Uh, the arrival of the French boys, which kind of threw a spanner in everyone's works, because uh, Peugeot and Citroën were both very, very dominant teams indeed. I mean, hell, Citroën went on to win in a year where Citroën wasn't even in the championship. Um, <laughs> that, that gives you an idea of how dominant Citroën was back then in uh, 2006. They actually pulled out for a year, so they pulled both Peugeot and Citroën out probably because they're both part of the same Into parent company and didn't see much point of keeping both rallying. But uh, they wanted, also wanted some time to develop the Citroen C4, which would later go on to win all of the everything. But uh, in, in that time they ran a semi-works team. They basically gave everyone a contract with this privateer team and they sort of basically agreed to pay everyone salaries for a year while they went off to develop this car. And uh, they still won with uh, Sebastian Loeb taking the uh, champion place on that, so that was pretty weird. So, yeah, Citroen's dominant even when Citroen isn't in the championship, which is weird when you go back to these uh, older games and find out the, uh, the Citroens don't win every single thing imaginable. That does start creeping in these games as time goes on, though. Uh, so we were six seconds up on Granholm, so Mackinnon takes their lead, kind of, although we've still got six seconds on him, which is good, heading into stage number four. Okay, so that's actually pretty interesting. So Three, by the looks of it, two, from what I can gather, one, uh, Carlos Sainz was world champion in 1990 and 1992. And interestingly, right one, in this year, 2001, he didn't one, actually win a single 50, rally. Right so, uh, yeah, his sort of inclusion as an OP opponent is a bit weird. I mean, I guess they didn't want it quite to... They, I guess they wanted, like, a slight bit of realism with the driver rankings, but at the same time, they didn't want to, like, you know, 100% recreate the driver's championship for 2001, because that would get very, very boring and predictable. And also, you'd be able to sort of intercept which drivers would be good at which rally and sort of, you know, pick your car based on that. Which, don't get me wrong, I already can do. Let's be honest, the best way to win in these older WRC games, if you want to, you know, lock out a championship or something, essentially the way to do it is just sort of pick the best driver. Um, or the driver that's going to win the most points. So, for example, if you want to do really well in the expert part of WRC, then I'd probably drive Carl Sainz's car or Tommy McKinnon's, but Sainz is the bigger threat of the two, in my opinion. And then, sort of, from this game onwards, basically pick Sebastian Loeb for everything. And, uh, yeah, you can sort of go from there, so... Pretty interesting that would go. I will say I'd probably prefer the Subaru for uh, Finland. It's a little bit again. I've, I've spoken about. I've spoken about the Subaru's stability, and same in a way with the Mitsubishi. And uh, in Finland, which is, you know, it's very straight line orientated. In a similar sort of way as Kenya was, but this rally, of course, has a lot more jumps and undulations in the surface which is kind of strange to say but it is true uh, you know this does have a lot bigger jumps and stuff and those can unsettle the hay and die more than they'd unsettle something like the Subaru because it's smaller and lighter so we're down in fourth apparently at the moment hopefully we'll have a good sector to uh, show that the way back home one nice thing about these uh, older games is the fact that you it's essentially around the entire stage is just a wall of solid trees which will quite happily bounce you back on the track should you collide with them. I remember seeing that in the older CMR games and found it very confusing. Of course you can't quite do the same thing in a, in a modern rally game because they do actually properly... Well, usually they just put a protected barrier around it. 
especially in the modern WRC games, which I really hate. There's a lot of strange reset points they have on tracks where sort of they want to instantly reset the car so you don't go out of bounds skating or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm not really a fan of uh, that stuff because sometimes it will just reset you when you're like no way near going out of bounds or anything like that. It's actually pretty irritating. Is this a straight line to the uh, the end now, or are you going to get some actual things? Also, researching Carlos Sainz is kind of difficult now, considering, you know, his son exists. And he, of course, had to name his son after him. Like a twat. And finish. Oh, shit, we got fucked in that stage. Ah, really oh, that's not good. I don't know how either, because I didn't feel that slow in that stage. But yeah, wow, we got really fucked in that stage. Still second fastest on the leaderboard though, so... Maybe they're just ungodly quick in that stage, that's a bit of a worry though. Oh wow, we're seven seconds behind Mackinnon now as well. That's not good, heading into... Oh wow, and this is a short stage as well. Wish us luck. Okay. Stage number Three, last. Two, Let's hope we one, can uh, overcome our deficit here. Because oh two. lord lord, we Caution. got creamed in that last rain stage. They must really step two, up for the uh, the rain stages and the night stages. We haven't really experienced a proper night stage yet. Though. That was sloppy driving. We can't let sloppy driving sink in now. Into right four. Second on Mackinnon. I can really deal with Gronholm being the quickest in this stage. I, there's no way I can get seven seconds if... Uh, if Tommy drives a good race, then uh, we're going to be fucked, basically. He's dropping back a bit. Not enough, though. If he keeps doing that and we have a really good stage, this is going to be the tightest fucking... Nope, he's coming back up. I don't see him dropping back either. I think we're going to have to take our second place and uh, enjoy it. Again, I'm, I'm really just confused by that stage 4, because honestly I don't see any way I could have been any faster through any of that. So... Well, he's 5 seconds down. Problem is, Gronholm and Mackin and both have really similar names. So. so he's 5 seconds down at this point. If he gets to 7 seconds, we'll pip him. There's the finish. Sick. Ah, fuck. That's not enough, is it? Almost, but no, quite spaghetti, I don't think. We're gonna lose by a fraction of an amount as well. Point six seven seconds. Uh, well, at least we didn't get swallowed up by Gronholm. That's 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 not good though. But, uh, oh well, seventy six points. I mean, Richard Burns got a point. Carl Sainz gets thwarted a little bit, overtaken by Mackinnon in the uh, the championship running. But uh, yeah. Gronholm gained some good points from that as well, as does Rogan Perra. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I don't know what to say to that, I'm a bit pissed off at that, because I don't, again, I don't quite know how I could have been any quicker through uh, that other stage. Don't get me wrong, I know I had some silly mistakes in the first two stages, but we was pretty on for that, but uh, never mind. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. Next time I'm going to be taking a look at the... New Zealand rally, I think it is. So join us for that. Until then, farewell. You know the sorrow that my heart holds in knowing just where my hopes and dreams are going. I'm